I'm Archdeacon Rod Bauer and I welcome you to evening prayer for Saturday. The reading will be from Colossians chapter 2 beginning at the 16th verse and the psalm is Psalm 78 beginning at the 39th verse. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He will make me lie down in green pastures and lead me beside still waters. He will refresh my soul and guide me in right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup shall be full. Surely your goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The day is now past and the night is at hand. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Father of lights, receive the prayer and praise we offer you as our evening sacrifice. Make us a light for all the world, delivered by your goodness from all the works of darkness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Psalm 78, beginning at the 39th verse. How often they rebelled against him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Again and again they put God to the test and provoked the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember his power or the day when he redeemed them from the enemy. How he wrought his signs in Egypt, his wonders in the country of Zoan. For he turned their rivers into blood, so that they could not drink from the streams. He sent swarms of flies that devoured them, and frogs that laid them waste. He gave their crops to the locust, and the fruits of their labour to the grasshopper. He struck down their vines with hailstones and their sycamore trees with frost. He gave up their cattle to the hail and their flocks to the flash of lightning. He loosed on them the fierceness of his anger, his fury, his indignation and distress. And these were his messengers of destruction. He opened a path for his fury he would not spare them from death, but gave up their lives to the pestilence. He struck down the firstborn of Egypt, the first fruits of their strength in their dwellings of Ham. As for his own people, he led them out like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. He led them in safety and they were not afraid but the sea covered their enemies. He brought them to his holy land, to the mountains that his own right hand had won. He drove out the nations before them and apportioned their lands as a possession and settled the tribes of Israel in their tents. But they rebelled against God Most High and put him to the test. They would not obey his commandments. They turned back and dealt treacherously like their parents. They turned aside, slack as an unstrung bow. They provoked him to anger with their hidden shrines and moved him to jealousy 
with their carved images. God heard and was angry. He utterly rejected Israel. He forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent where he had dwelt among us. He gave the ark of his might into captivity and his glory into the hands of the enemy. He delivered his people to the sword and was enraged against his own possession. Fire devoured the young men. There was no one to bewail the maidens. Their priests fell by the sword and there was none to mourn for the widows. Then the Lord awoke like a man out of sleep, like a warrior that had been overcome with wine. He struck the backs of his enemies as they fled and put them to perpetual shame. He rejected the family of Joseph. He refused the tribe of Ephraim. But he chose the tribe of Judah and the hill of Zion, which he loved. He built his sanctuary like the heights of heaven, like the earth which he had formed forever. He chose David, his servant, and took him from the sheepfolds. He brought him from following the ewes to be the shepherd of his people Jacob and of Israel, his own possession. So he tended them with upright heart and guided them with skillful hands. Lord Christ, eternal word and light of the Father's glory, send your light and your truth that we may both know and proclaim your word of life to the glory of God the Father, for you now live and reign, God, for all eternity. Amen. A reading from the letter to Colossians, chapter 2, beginning at the 16th verse. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or of observing festivals, new moons or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the stub substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking. And do not hold fast to the head from which the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God. If with Christ you die to the elemental spirits of the universe, why do you live as if you still belong to the world? Why do you submit to regulations? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. All these regulations refer to things that perish with use. They are simply human commands and teachings. These have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-imposed piety, humility and severe treatment of the body. But they are of no value in checking self-indulgence. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For since by one man came death, by another has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, 
even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant us such a measure of your grace that, running in the way of your commandments, we may obtain your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal One, we bring before you Peter, our bishop, along with Sonia and Charlie, our assistant bishops. Continue, we pray, to grant them wisdom and encouragement and strength as they lead us in this difficult time. We join our hearts prayerfully to the first peoples of this diocese, the Awabakal, the Biripai, the Darkenjung, the Giwagal, Kamilaroi, Waramai and Wanarua peoples. Grant us a true sense of reconciliation. We join in prayer with bishop, clergy and people of the diocese of Guadalcanal. May we continue together to witness to the resurrection. We pray for the leaders of this nation, for Scott, our Prime Minister, for Gladys, our Premier, for the National Cabinet. We give thanks for the blessings that the people of Victoria are now receiving in the reduction of new cases and we give thanks that we have been able to continually contain the virus in New South Wales. We pray for those affected by COVID-19, their families and their friends, for those who have lost loved ones and livelihoods, who have lost a sense of security. We pray your blessing of comfort. We give thanks for all emergency and essential services personnel, especially for those who risk exposing themselves to the virus in their daily work. We pray you may surround them in your hedge of protection and grace. We pray for scientists, seeking a treatment or vaccine for the virus. We pray that you may be their inspiration, their guidance and their light. We pray especially for the people of the United States. We pray for a peaceful resolution in their democratic process. We pray for President Trump and for Melania, that they may have a speedy recovery from the virus. We pray for clear heads and steady hands in this time of crisis. We continue to pray for the clergy and people of the parishes of Christchurch, 
Christchurch Cathedral, Hamilton, Katara, Lambton, Merriweather and Cooks Hill. We pray especially for the parish of Merriweather as they prepare to welcome their new priest. We pray for the staff, students and families of Newcastle Grammar School. Especially as they take a break during the holidays that they may be refreshed to return in the new term. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Come to visit us, Lord, this night, so that by your strength we may rise at daybreak to rejoice in the resurrection of Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen.